Now, talking about Ethiopia, are there particular uh, policies or things you think that country is doing differently that other countries in sub-Saharan Africa perhaps would have to follow suit? Well, we believe that Ethiopia is um, trying to encourage a lot of foreign investments into the country. Um, they've simply recently tried to open um, the markets um, following the new, new, um, the new leader of the country, and um, that is likely to boost investments in that market. Um, they're in, in investing in a number of public infrastructure projects, the, the railway um, line between Ethiopia and Djibouti, and then there are also some construction um, projects, projects taking place in the power sector. So the growth is mainly coming because of, of a lot of investments in public infrastructure, and, and that will help to spearhead um, the economy into a different growth trajectory, um, unlike other, other countries. So that has been the main reason in addition to the relative stability um, within that, that um, country. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time, Gaimin. Gaimin Noyana is the head of economic research at Ecobank London. And the Bank of Ghana has collapsed five struggling commercial banks into a new one called the Consolidated Bank of Ghana Limited. This decision follows the liquidity challenges faced uh, the banks, namely Sovereign Bank, Royal Bank, the Beige Bank, Construction Bank and Unibank. The Ghanaian government says it has made 450 million CDs available for the Consolidated Bank of Starting Capital and has named Daniel Addo as its CEO. The newly consolidated bank renders all the affected banks as branches. Unibank has at least 55 branches. Royal Bank had at least 25 branches. Sovereign Bank had four. Beige Bank had 63, while construction was only starting with one. And Tanzania Central Bank has taken over the management of mid-sized commercial lender Bank M as the lender has critical liquidity problems and is unable to meet its obligations. The Bank of Tanzania says the continuation of the bank's operations in the current liquidity conditions is detrimental to the interests of depositors and poses systemic risk to the stability of the financial system. And Societe Generale is in talks with South African lender Absa about selling its local unit as the French bank prepares to pull out of Africa's most industrialized economy. The deal would end Societe Generale's nearly three decades in South Africa as it looks to cut costs and focus on its key markets. South Africa's third largest lender, Absa, is the front runner to buy Societe Generale's sole branch in Johannesburg. Buying Societe Generale's South African business would hand APSA formerly Barclays Africa, a company with nearly 9 billion rand in asset. It would also underline CEO Mari Remo's determination to broaden APSA's products, offering under a new strategy to regain market share at home and double the sales contribution from its 10 operations elsewhere in Africa. And Dubai's government says the London Court of International Arbitration has ruled DP World's port container terminal in contract in Djibouti was valid and binding. The government of Djibouti seized the Dorala container terminal from DP World in February over a dispute dating back to at least 2012. Dubai government controlled DP World has called the seizure illegal. Djibouti Ports and Free Zone Authority said in March it was willing to buy out DP World's 33% stake in the container terminal to end the row with one of the world's largest port operators. In 2017, the LCIA cleared DP World of allegations of misconduct associated with the terminal concession awarded in 2000. And Anglo Gold Ashanti says it will sink to a first half profit due to increased production and lower retrenchment costs. 
The South African gold miner, which is due to report first half results on August 20, said in a preliminary estimate today that it expects headline earnings of between $91 million and $108 million for January to June, with headline earnings per share of between $0.22 cents and $0.26. Cents. That compares to a headline loss and headline loss per share for the same period last year of $89 million and $0.22, cents respectively. The turnaround in performance was also due to the absence of once-off non-cash settlement costs for silicosis class action claims. Anglo said production from retained operations increased by 4% in the first half of 1.578 million ounces from 1.517 million ounces a year earlier. And when we come back after the break, world food prices fall 3.7% in July. Details in a moment. Do stay with us.